This is how to eliminate and prevent back pain for good and fortify your strength three times as much as you need for any sport, movement, or daily life. Quick test, how far forward can you fold and how high up is your bridge and how mobile is your torso circle? I hope this video is the final video you need on the subject because I'll show you every secret I've used for eliminating lower back pain and maintaining high level training into my fifth decade of life plus what's worked for countless students. The first and absolutely most critical element that I don't want you to overlook today is flexibility flexibility, but perhaps just as important is being three times stronger than you need to be for anything you want to do, especially in areas that are underdeveloped in most people. Main reason for low back pain is compression of vertebrae, discs leak out, inflammation occurs, this can touch on the nerves sending shooting pain called radiculopathy. Flexibility and strength in the rest of your body releases that compression on your lower back like torso mobility, front folding, bridging, even shoulder flexibility, plus a bunch of secrets we're going to get into today. I've had lower back pain since I was 18. It was actually really scary in my mid 20s and I didn't want to just get back to lifting weights but high level strength and skills like you see in my videos. It's what I love and I'm sure you love things you want to get back to or make sure you can keep doing them forever. I've had five bulging discs in my lower back from sitting for 12 years in those stupid public school chairs and then sitting as an artist for so many hours a day. It would just ache and then the stupidest movements like emptying the trash would trigger this insane pain. It just created more and more compression. The cool advanced moves you see are what helped me fortify strength and solve it for good and I'll show you exactly the moves that worked for me. First, get an MRI if you need to, but most of the time pain is caused by inflammation unless you're hitting a nerve and then there's radiculopathy that shoots down a limb. If you have radiculopathy, I've heard people healing over time because inflammation could be hitting the nerve and so it just needs to calm down over a few weeks or months. On the other hand, if it's mechanical, then it simply needs to be fixed. If it's acute, my personal number one go-to that thank goodness I don't have to do anymore is laying with legs elevated with ice under plus non-steroid inflammatories like ibuprofen and tons of water, usually one week and then back to business even if working through stiffness. Moves to avoid. I firmly believe that training deadlifts long term at high weight is going to cause problems. I've personally lifted significant weight but it's just not worth it. We've heard the same from hundreds of others and the fact is that even professional athletes don't use it because it's high risk low reward. If you're a power lifter or specifically trying to hit records, that's a different story and more of a sport or specialization. Same for Olympic lifting. It's a highly specialized sport with a high risk to low reward ratio and be incredibly careful with heavy squats. The reason injuries occur is because you're going from anterior to posterior tilt in fractions of an inch that you simply cannot see or control within milliseconds and millimeters and then there goes a disc. Now the moves to do, the corrective moves for flexibility and strength. First is front lever which is just plain magic. It's truly a game changer. You start with hollow hold variations on the ground. A lot of issues with your back will stem from anterior pelvic tilt. Hollow holds help specifically condition the opposite posterior pelvic tilt and this is required for all kinds of movement and advanced athletics all the way to throwing a punch. Often people's transverse abdominus is weak here and you can tell because your back will be arched doing anterior tilt instead of hollow doing posterior and the shoulders will fall to the ground. Some people even complain of back pain when they try to do a hollow hold. Another sign is a front lever. Lats have to be strong sure but people will fall into a pike shape almost like a v-up because they just have no core and immediately resort to hip flexors which tighten up and worsen the issue because they're connected to your spine. Then you've got tight hips and then more problems. Like for me, I thought my core was great. I could do dragon flags, even 20 rounds of flares, but my lower back still caused all kinds of problems. One thing to both assess and resolve lower back pain is building strength that you can do through front lever training. And at its most basic, the crunch hollow position. Some people come back and say just a few days or weeks of this strengthen their core to the point that they don't feel pain anymore. So make that a staple hollow hold work, starting with crunch position then straddle, then straight as you build more core strength. But don't stop there. At a certain point, you actually go into anterior pelvic tilt with dragon flags and then keep fortifying your strength by building the front lever. But don't be overwhelmed. It took several months for me to build the front lever. Just start on the floor and master all of your hollow positions. And while you're trying out the hollow position, go ahead and click subscribe, but also opt in so if Google ever crumbles like the empires of history, you can stay connected with us. Another that's magical is a special brew of Powerbatics wizardry. It's a few technical things, okay? You want to be able to move your lower back, but your lumbar is not designed to be flexible like the rest of your back is. And so lack of mobility in the rest of your back will cause problems. And this is where just straight calisthenics actually fall short because their exercises are usually one dimensional, like a front lever, and they don't involve rotation, mobility, and dynamic movement. So there's three things here to build all of that. First is folding in half frontwards, which is called pike. The forward pike flexibility requires lower back and hamstring flexibility simultaneously. And because 
because often we lack these, it causes compression and lower back issues. The level to strive to is a V-stand and press handstand. In fact, when I was having a bout of pain, I'd use both of these to see how bad it was. And often there'd be a flare up when I was not keeping up with these in training. I'd actually work through the pain of it and work V-stand and press handstand and it would help work the mobility and strength back as inflammation went down. I wanted to share a quick story that I think will help you a lot about Matt, late 40s, broken back, and made massive progress and progressed all the way up to handstands. Also gonna share a few key elements that really worked for him. I had a car accident injury up there and then my lower back has just been this past year. I had three bulging discs. I didn't know about the cracked vertebrae until later, but we figured out when it, when it happened. I think I saw an interview of you talking about your five bulging discs and I was like, oh, there we go. Slowly I've relied on work to keep me fit and then I started sitting more. I have to stop and remember that last May I cracked a vertebrae. The difference is phenomenal and everybody at work keeps commenting like, God, even you're walking better. My posture's better, everything's better. What goals did you have? Well, first of all, I just wanted to get out of pain. And the second level of it was I wanted to be strong enough to play with my five-year-old who was in gymnastics and I did Kung Fu when I was a kid. I wanted him to do Kung Fu again. I just felt like I couldn't keep up with him. So I wanted to fix my core. And part of that was being able to do handstands, stalders, being able to do a front flip and a back flip again. Stuff that I felt like I could do when I was in my prime. What did we implement in your training that worked for you the best? I, mean, I think the structure of it and understanding that it was a foundation and it literally always had to go back to time under tension. And although I could cheat a move, I was just cheating myself and understanding that. So the more time in, the more I was gonna get out of it. I feel like I'm in a lot less danger of getting hurt in a skill test or my work, frankly, which is how I hurt myself. <laughs> if I were to go back to the beginning and seeing what my training was like the first week, the second week, the third week, and even recording it with videos and uploading them, it really kind of keeps you accountable to it, but it also lets you go back and be like, wow, I'm, I'm not where I was. What have been your biggest victories and successes? That crab. In the beginning, I was like, I don't understand what this is even remotely and why does it hurt in my shoulder and the back? Like, what, what's going on here? And the fact that I could just do it now is just blows me away. And secondly, the other day when I was able to do my first handstand press, because it's been so much effort to try and get that, and then it took me understanding the anatomy of it to finally get one up. You only live once, go for it. One really easy way to start is just the L hip lift, but we'll need the hamstring flexibility to get there. This is where folks will complain of T-Rex arms. You don't actually have short arms, you have really tight hamstrings and no core. Sorry to be blunt. So how do we build hamstring flexibility? There's a lot of powerful movements for this as well as static holds. There's also the J curls and adding weight up to full body weight. I was at one point doing J curls with 185 pounds as a warm up before deadlifts. Again, you don't start there, you build to it. So no weight at first. Think about your spine like a candy necklace, moving one vertebrae at a time down the string. And then to use another candy analogy, unlike the deadlift, you wanna be in a candy cane position with a rounded back and straight legs until you fold into a pipe. Then add weight, five pounds, then 10. After a while, you might get to a barbell and weights. Another really good way to build hamstring flexibility is with what we call the dragon butt or the horizontal hang. Though you might just start with laying flat on your back and legs on the wall. Then one foot on the bar with with both hands and a straight leg. Then both feet. The way I would do it, because I literally have done it, is with the compression strength development of the L hip lift and unweighted body rolls in the J curl position. Then progress those to weighted J curls and full V stands. Then we move to backwards bending in the back limber. But we just start with pelvis lifts while laying on the floor. Oftentimes people can't even lift up into a bridge, which reveals upper back and shoulder tightness. And all that tightness shifts the lower back into compromised positions. And then people are saying they're too old when in reality they're just too stiff and that can be fixed. But again, it just starts with laying on the back and lifting the hips. That's it. Then start pressing into the floor and getting off the ground. Now the effort that you actually have to put in on things like this is probably 10 times more than you think. I've got loads of stories of 40 plus year old people chalking their hands and pushing for long bridge holds until almost tears and maybe just one inch off the ground. And by tears, I don't mean sharp pain or something dumb. I mean just that level of focus and effort and body burning with lactic acid. It takes work. It's 
it's not just gonna fix itself and neither will a gimmick and I keep saying things like that because the internet is about 95% filled with gimmicks even from allegedly the most trusted qualified sources just be careful with your information and put in the work I wanted to also share something really cool this is actually a job interview that we did with somebody who applied to work for us who is a top level competitive CrossFit athlete who sustained multiple injuries and even a broken back and then he started doing some of our training and made massive progress. So I wanted to share that story with you because I know that it's gonna help you. Tell me a little bit about your health and what's going on. The way I actually found out about Pacific Rim Athletics has just been in my multi-year journey of just trying to heal my body from all of the injuries and all of the chronic problems that it's had from uh, my competitive career. I was a competitive CrossFit athlete. I started at 13. I qualified for the age group qualifier pretty soon into there. There started to be some injuries popping up. About a year in, I broke my back for the first time. I fractured my L5 about two places. Big problem was I went to a doctor. He told me it was a pulled muscle that I was fine. Last forward about a year of chronic pain. I was still a competitive CrossFit athlete, competed at a national competition and all that stuff, but constantly in pain. I got to the point where I couldn't sit down and that's when I finally went to a, some more doctors and found out I had a fractured back, back brace for six months, recovery, all that stuff. Recover from that, go back to being a competitive CrossFit athlete, have very good success there. I ended up qualifying for the world championships, finished 12th in the teenage division out of the entire planet. Very soon after that, I fractured my back again and that whole time there's been dozens of chronic overuse injuries I've had. I have had uh, shoulder knots that have just been lasting for months. I've had Osgood slaughters, I've had ankle problems, I've had chronic shin splints to where I couldn't take a jump without incredibly excruciating pain that would last for weeks. But I could squat 300 pounds, you know, all that kind of stuff. It's very fragile and yet strong body. <laughs> like yeah, you say, yeah, I know what you mean. Build on, build on a glass foundation solely on a glass foundation. Still in pretty severe amount of pain. I couldn't move certain ways. If I bend and grab something wrong, I would still be a shot of pain at my spine, in my hip or in my glute. But literally since I've been working with your principles just by myself without any guidance whatsoever, I've had zero back pain. Fully physically healthy, completely fixed all of the Pain this, is like the, this is like the you. perfect testimonial. I want you to know. I'm fully aware. Words can't express how impactful that I, I mean, from the age of 13, I've been in constant pain from something. And I've been told by Olympic coaches and Olympic trainers and the best of the best of the best in the world that like, oh, well, yeah, you're just gonna have to live with that. Like, huh. you know, you're, you're 18 and you're just like, well, get used to it. And that, I watched your first video about two months ago. And the second I watched the video, I started, I watched all of them, I applied this and it started, it completely changed my entire training and programming to instant, like, like no question, just instantly I felt the difference. I felt the change, the shift from working my body and properly and like isolating movements and all that stuff to try like focusing on everything as a unit and working as a whole. And it made such a palpable difference. I, I'm, I'm literally changing my entire life right now mm. I to move to do this, to pursue this opportunity. It's how much I believe in what you guys teach. You have to wait to see if he's hired. Then there's rotational mobility. Most basic is just a torso circle. Most advanced would be taking all of this and developing flares. Even just the process of building flares will be more core conditioning than most fitness plan. Even the around the world going slowly with good form. It'll build your obliques with fortification so picking up a box doesn't throw it out. And if you flip the flare upside down then it turns into rotational hanging and the meat hook. The most basic is the hanging crunch wipers. Like I say, it's like magic when you know the steps. It won't happen in a chiropractor's office and it doesn't happen from a quick little exercise gimmick. Don't think a five minute hack is gonna resolve it and don't shoot the messenger. And sometimes there's setbacks. Don't think there aren't, but you can fix this and sustainably so. It's gonna involve patience and rebuilding, but it is possible and probably even more rapidly than you think if you take it seriously and do the correct work. Here's one final note, splits, all directions. If you're starting at 90 degrees like a lot of people might be, start thinking in weeks, months, 
months, even a year or so of training. It's weird how they work too. It just makes everything else feel loose and ready, including the lower back. Try some 10 minute splits like our students do. And if you're into origin stories, solving these problems for myself is something that helped lead to creating Pacific Rim Athletics. And I really do hope this helps someone out there. And maybe we'll get you inspired to come train with us at HQ or online. And I'd be remiss to not say that training from videos is a high risk to reward ratio. There's a lot of potential to make things worse. So I highly recommend training with a coach, sensei, be it with us or otherwise. If you do want to, you can chat with my team and be training in the next day or two. And if you implement the coaching and not go off track, you'll do it without injury and at a sustainable growth rate. See you in the next video.